podcast, we definitely discuss healing. We discuss uh, aspects of psychology. Um, we discuss, like, you know, you becoming the best you. Mm-hmm. Mental wellness. For sure. Health. Femininity. Parenthood. Dating. Definitely dating. Single parents. Um, and it's from a lens of two psychologists, you know? Yeah. So, um. But also two, two people who grew mm-hmm. up. Like, with both parents, Mm -hmm. married parents, and then, like, you all know that Chloe and I are the youngest of our crews. Like, her siblings and my siblings. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, it's from that perspective. Yeah, looking at life through that lens. So, you're going to get a whole lot of things from us. Mm Mm-hmm. From us being women, mm-hmm. going through life as parents, and all of these awesome attributes. But yeah. yes, womanology, the study of women. The study of women. <laughs> all right, welcome back to Everyone Needs an Aquarius. We are back. We are back in the building. Happy New Year to everyone. Dom, how was your New Year's Eve? New Year's, did you do anything? No, I finally... I finally tested negative on Christmas Eve. I mean, no, Christmas Eve. <laughs> I didn't so want to put that out of the crystal, but I guess you want to. <laughs> listen, I've been dodging COVID for three years. Had not had COVID. Caught COVID. Had to have been in St. Louis. And tested positive on Christmas. Now, yeah, and here we are. I feel like I'm, my body is still... I didn't really have it bad. Like, I'm, I'm just very thankful. And that's because I was afraid because of having um, asthma. Oh, could it affect you more? Yeah, it would affect me more. And especially, I, I think, because the, the medicine that I'm on, the steroid that I'm on, like, it, it weakens your immune system a little bit. Uh, so I, I wonder if that's how I caught it, because literally nobody else in the group had it. Um, mm. thank God, because I know like they had like super big New Year's plans. So I, that was my uh, like thing. I was afraid that I had gotten somebody else sick. And so when I tell people, I just want to tell people COVID is still very alive out here, very, uh, prominent in these streets. There are new strains. If you feel and when in doubt, I just say, take a test. That's all I got for y'all. Mm-hmm. When in doubt, take a test. Because I actually, Christmas morning, I woke up feeling really good. And I had tested when I got back to LA and it was negative. And then I was like, let me just make sure I'm okay. Because I started to cook dinner and I was going to invite people over. And I tested positive. So, yeah. Like, hey, everybody, hold up. <laughs> Yeah, I uh like I have made more of the 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 duck fat co- collard greens, and so my friend came because he baked me a, a sweet potato pie, and Ooh. so I was like, "Yo, like I'ma just put the the greens on the door. You leave me my pie, fair <laughs> <Great> exchange." <laughs> yeah, I didn't so, do nothing for New Year's. Like I literally, I, I day drink on New Year's. Well, I lit. I I cleaned up the rest of my house to make sure it was on like New Year's Eve. Like my clothes was washed, all that stuff. Uh, but I chill. Like uh, I was supposed to go to a homegirl's house. It it was pouring down raining, and parking at her house's ass. So I wasn't doing that. And so my dude came over. Um, which initially I was supposed to stop at my friend's house, then go to his place. So it worked out because he came here and then I passed out. I woke up, it was 12.08. <laughs> you weren't rocking with the, what is, what is it? Rocking with the ball the, drop? Yeah, well, it was like, it's Listen, something, isn't it called rocking with the ABC or like rocking I don't to the know, ball but drop? I, let me tell you, next year, I'm watching Miley Cyrus' show. Like what do you her mean? She, she, she's doing a show or something? She, she did uh, like uh, her own like, New Year's party type thing that was televised. Baby, she had Dolly Parton. Uh, Sia was there. Sia, uh, Sia? No, Sia, S-I-A, the I want to say. Oh, Sia, I think you said Sia. I was like, no, oh, she no, kiss from a rose? Sia, not kiss from a rose, Sia, S-I-A. Yeah. And I believe Ray Shriver was there. Paris Hilton fucking before on Stars Are Blind. I know it's a terrible song, but it's so much fun. And it's just nostalgic. It's nostalgic. It's, it really is. And I was like, oh, I can't miss this next year. So, yeah. What was it? Was it in L.A. or where was it? I don't, I don't know. But all I saw was the clips. And I was like, I can't believe I slept through this. I was so mad. Because, like, Dolly Parton sang Wrecking Ball with her. And then it went into Jolene. And it was so good. 
Oh. And then she sang, uh, I will always love you. Oh, snap. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? I mean, I know it's her song. Well, she said it's Whitney's song now. Right. But isn't it kind of sacrilegious for her to almost sing the song that like it's almost weird. Like it is Dolly Parton's song, but you feel wrong seeing Dolly Parton sing it, even though it's Whitney, it's her song. You know, <laughs> I I don't know. I I love Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton is the is the bomb to me. You know, that I mean I And I mean, her her I, I think it's also um her tone when she performed. Like when she is there a biopic sitting there for her? Is the she does she have like a crazy story? I watched a documentary on her mm -hmm. on was it Netflix? It was it was pretty interesting. Um I know she like because like her husband, he always was kind of like let her do her thing, always kind of was in the background. So it like it really worked out. I did she grow up. I'm trying to remember how she ended up in Nashville. Because I know she has some siblings. I can't remember. I'm gonna have to watch it again. But it was um, you know, people kind of thought she was like a, you know, like a, a whore, freak show type person because of how she looked. And what's crazy is that, you know, when you look at early pictures, of the, and not saying that she's a bad looking woman now, but Dolly Parton was really pretty, like really attractive. If, oh, yeah. you know, and, and especially if you're not really like, oh, she cute for one. You know how they were trying to say we'd be pretty for black girl. Mm -hmm. She was really pretty, like very attractive. And people, I mean, it was it people thinking she was a freak and all, all like that because she had big breasts. That was the whole kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, that was, yeah. Yeah, sucker shit. Oh. All right, since we talking about rebrands, uh, one Corinne Steffens, um, is, but the hood may know her by Superhead, but now she goes by, um, let me get her name right, Elizabeth Overseen, mm -hmm. has done a rebrand, did not know about this until we got on here, Dom. I just knew, I saw something came out that she was Elizabeth something, but I thought it was like a pen name. I didn't know it was a, like, oh, I'm going to write books or something, because she was supposed to be having yeah. a baby with some chef dude that's popular I never heard of. Yeah, so she that that recently uh, was announced that she is pregnant, and I was like, "Oh wow, okay." Um, but before <laughs> I was, I, I tuned into her live. I try to you know see what's popping, and I know like every once in a while she will go live and you know do Q and As and all that stuff. But um, this was like, "What should I pack?" But she's getting ready for a trip in New York. But I'm reading the comments. And then these comments is like telling her, pack it up, girl. He a child. You probably should bring a clown suit. Uh, like all of this stuff. So I don't know what's going on, but from the sounds of it, she's not together with this guy. I don't know if it was ever her partner, but she's pregnant. And I think he kind of acting a fool. Based I mean, he's on only that. 30 years old. I looked up, he's only 30. I don't know how old she is. 24. I was that <laughs> I, I, I got it all sitting right here on the screen. Okay, I, I knew she had to be in her forties or like pushing it. Yeah, she'll be forty five this year. Yeah, and so I I think that she um I don't like I was I, I don't I don't know if he said something publicly that made her like, you know, like he wouldn't want me to expose him. You know, people tell you certain stuff that they would never want the world to know. And he should, you know, be careful, you know, tread lightly. So I'm like, what is going on? But see, here's the thing. A hard head makes a soft behind. And mm. you would think, especially at her age and not saying that oh with age comes wisdom because that's not true not at all but based on her situation in the past she would do better and what was funny is that as people were kind of telling her like oh he a clown and what da, 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 you you know that's clown behavior he a clown da, 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 da. her response to all of the, the stuff that people were saying was like you know honestly i don't care because i'm rich 
But I mean, she might be though. I mean, well, she's a three. I didn't know she's a three time New York Times bestseller. Those yeah, decisions and, on books are, not, are nasty good. Yeah, and so I think that she was able to do a rebrand, and, and clearly she's had some former training because, like I said, she said former senior copywriter. You know, so she's learned something where she's learned the words where she could create her own like agency or whatever um, that specializes like in hospitality and things like that. Who knows what that means? Because now I'm thinking back, I was like, shit, that can mean a plethora of things. But if it's a real rebrand, why would you even go back out there? Even sh- like if I'm, I'm changing up my name, I'm just going to change up my name. I'm not going to put myself back out there. But oh, shit, that's super hit. Like I would just keep it just real plain and just do the rebrand. Yeah, you know, I was good because when I first stumbled across her, I was like, damn, this person looks like Corinne Stephens. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. I wouldn't And even then have, I was I confused and I was like, period. you know, I ain't even go, y'all gonna talk shit about me in the comments, but I was like, damn, the light skins be starting to look alike too sometimes. <laughs> but <laughs> I had to do my ghetto. I, I ain't done that in a long time. <laughs> uh but you know, I was like, man, that really. And then, so I'm like googling. I'm like, Corinne Stephens. I was like, man, they just really look alike with this girl. Like clearly, you no. Know, like maybe it's not her because she's very pale. You know, we used to her having a warmer skin color. Maybe getting mm-hmm. the tan and all this. So I was really perplexed. And then I started to listen to asking for a friend. And it was an episode where she was talking about a dating bracket. And so I remember writing in the comments, like, listen to it. I was like, girl, I thought dating brackets for everybody, you know, women, men. Like, I felt like that was. What is a dating bracket? What is what was what was the whole point? Was it so dating? you know how you have like your bracket, your 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 football bracket, your basketball bracket, whatever. We have the final four, final five. Oh. When it comes to dating people, so you move people around. Okay, this person is the loser, so now he moves over here, and now he competed oh, wow. with this person. This is that's a lot. I mean. That's a lot of people to, like for a bracket. When like, you I mean, really what? think about it, though, if depending on how many people, let's say you might have a starting five, is it really? When you think about it, it's really not a lot. And men probably do it more often than what they really think. Because no, men, men do it. No, you know how men do it? Who stick around the longest? It's it's more survivor than well, in the bracket. <laughs> well, no, I would yeah. say. I would say regarding men and dating, I, I tend to think, you know, we're as women put, we put all of our eggs in one basket. We're getting out of that phase, that stage of dating. Um, and it's becoming more like men, like, okay, I got a dozen eggs. Men definitely was like, I got an egg over here, an egg over there, an egg down there. I got an egg in Mississippi and whatever. So women are kind of learning that game a little bit. And, and, the cool thing is, is, and even if you, if, if they are, does the, does the numbers support a woman really that, because that, that only works for attractive women, I feel like, or women that of means just like the same thing. We have a whole bunch of women around is a more of a dude that has means or has some swag, has something about him. The regular dude that's working at the quick trip, that's just a regular dude ain't got no, uh, no bracket. You'd be no, no, okay, no, no, but we're talking about. I'm saying if you're talking about quality people, quality people, only quality, like, 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 yeah, I can go get a whole bunch of bust downs, and, yeah, and I can have me a bracket, but is it really a good bracket if all the teams are, you know? I, I mean, sometimes that's just where the the, the cards may fall, yeah, and way. you know what, and you may, di- I mean, yeah, yeah, but Listen, I'm just saying, baby, I think this, I think baby. This, I'm an Aquarius. I ain't telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. <laughs> That's real. That's real. That's real. So, I mean, so, so she was in a bracket. All right. Yeah. So I was, t- I, I just, you know, simply, you know, like that was our interaction. It was just like, I, I thought that that was a thing. And she was like, you just really be surprised. I was like, but, you know, I thought that's what it always was because it's always like what made the best man win. You know, yeah. like, even if it's like, okay, we at the finals, this, this person, this person, they might not know about each other. They might, but it's like, you, you, clearly, I'm the prize. <laughs> Better show up and show out. But, what, okay, so how does this work with this bracket? What if that person's in the finals for yours, but you still in the sweet 16 of theirs? <laughs> May the cards fall where they may. 
because you might get eliminated. Because because you might get eliminated, and next thing you know, like you felt like this was going to do, like don't want to talk. You be like, God damn. And that's because like, you was only in lead eight. <laughs> yeah, and he was like, like, damn, I gotta. I don't, you know, it's it's seven more holes I got to fight against. I didn't even know about them. <laughs> yep. But it, you know, you really be surprised. I I feel like to a certain degree, women, men are a little, and, and, I, and I feel like women are catching up because I think there's a bigger stigma on women when it comes to dating because then it's the assumption that oh you're loose you sleep with everybody and even if she is oh well who gives it's her personal choice it's that's her business right so we're we're catching up and kind of playing those games but i've been in situations before i'm like you fucking with me all right well i'm also i'm fucking with you but it's also somebody so if you really you really fucking with me fuck with me yeah and, 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 and and show me why i shouldn't be looking elsewhere and a lot of people don't know how to they don't they they fold under that pressure, man. So I'm like, all right, I got my I got my chip over here. So cool. You eliminated yourself. And uh Corinne Stephens is a Leo. Oh, that's my rising in my moon. <laughs> Kudos but, to you. So it can uh, and this is my my final question to you before we go on the next topic. And we can discuss this for a few minutes. Can Corinne Stephens really rebrand herself? Is it really possible? You saw I was confused. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know, no, but it, a real, a real, re, like, can she really rebrand where people, I, you know, or is it so crazy? far down the rabbit hole? But look at, like, that's, I don't, the I difference. Think here's the difference, though, in hindsight. Mm -hmm. I'll say this. Yep. Drea is the perfect case study regarding a rebrand. But she didn't go all the way down the whole like career She didn't stuff. change her, like, okay, we get now, and she go by Dre and Michelle. Yep. But for the most part, people be forgetting that They Dre, don't put this super here. Jay-Z, Jada Kiss, it's a gang I mean, of cats in classic also, songs. So here's the crazy thing about social media. It's, it's But it's in classic no, songs. No. no, think about it from this perspective. Yes, millennials, we're consuming it, but it's a whole nother world of people that have no idea or no clue who this person is. Like you said, shit, I forgot or I didn't even know that she was a three-time, like we knew it was a New York bestseller, mm -hmm. but you didn't know it was that. It was so many people consuming. And remember, there was a period of time, even in the early stages of blogging, mm -hmm. where she was kind of still relevant where you had a long relevancy now don't get it twisted. you you know like no no, no. I, oh I, I will never i'm not taking that away from her but remember she was going with eddie we were all confused like you on out with eddie and then he and was uh, and be short when we were still confusion so <laughs> i think i think for her i i feel like i'm gonna be honest i feel like if she didn't change her name i i really believe that she could have still done what she had done maybe what you know she said she went to be a copywriter she was educated all this stuff i think she still could have did that but i think for her it was for uh, uh imperative for her to probably change her name uh and, and develop and adapt a new moniker just to probably get a little further ahead in certain lanes but so if you're doing the same I, antics, don't you don't you taint the new name as well? If she's doing the same old bullshit she was doing before, I mean, she could potentially be doing that. But hey, she got the training. She has like more media, like whatever it was, training under her belt. Where maybe somebody might not have taken a chance to take us. Nah, it's like we we know your story. You are gonna be chaos up in here. Nobody's gonna take you seriously. It's gonna be a problem. So maybe that's why she did it. But I feel I feel like for her, her especially with when she was uh, briefly on that podcast, I feel like it kind of exposed her to a new audience of people. Mm. But of course, because like when you really look at her following, she has like eighty something thousand followers. Chris and Stephen should have way more followers than that. Oh, if she and it's, and it's not like these niggas still haven't found found her because she also has a conversation about dog like. Niggas that I ain't seen in like 15, 20 years are hitting me up, like are, are sending me messages. 
So it's not like they don't know that's who she is. It's just like, hey, that's my past. That's a person in my past. I embrace it. I acknowledge it. That person helped, you know, like me become the person that I am today, but I'm no longer superhead. And yeah, that's I don't it. think she can ever get away from it. I think that maybe because it's I'm a older cat. I don't know. I just don't think she's ever going to be able to get past that moniker. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Next up, Shamar Moore is having a baby for the first time at 53, right? You know, good for Shamar Moore. Yeah. Like, but, I, that's not, I, that's, but that's not why we're here, though. Yes, listen, good. You know, I'm here's the crazy thing about men y'all can always women where we have a clock to a certain degree. You know, I, I'm told that by the time I have a baby, D, I'm a have a geriatric pregnancy, though they have now started to retire that name. And you know, having friends that are older wanting to have children like you know you know people's moms are asking them uh, i mean well she's 38 can she have a kid and you know it's just it's so much more pressure on us to grow up and settle down and, and be wives and moms and things and y'all y'all have all the fucking time in the world even if y'all sperm count is hella low there's still a chance you can get somebody pregnant at 80 years old. Yeah, 100% we can. Like, not fair, not cool, not okay. And, you know, for him, if he has wanted to settle down and have this child at that big age, you know, great. And yeah, I, I hope that he has enough money where he doesn't have to wear another braided wig. I mean, that was probably a good check for him, though. I ain't even gonna hold you. If if Tyler came a calling, I'ma come up. I'm like, yeah. Look, I got hair, and I'm wearing that braided wig. I'm like, I, I'm 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 definitely like, yeah. Where do I sign my name? Cash in a check. <laughs> What's the royalty situation look like? Do I get residuals when it airs on BET? Fifty eleven thousand times, because you know it's gonna air on BET. Oh, you know it's so, gonna be on there all the time all the time so with that being said let me tell you how somebody tried to catfish me like they were shamar moore that, that's what we here that's what we came here for ladies and gentlemen we don't really give a damn about uh shamar moore having a baby we want to know about how she almost got catfished and thought it was shamar moore Let's first of all dominique is never almost about to get catfish Okay, I'm what always a step. I'm always ahead of these niggas. Oh, no, I no. I, I believe this catfish was good. Let's go. I want to hear the story. It wasn't even okay. The first time I'm, I'm gonna say this. The first time, oh, so somebody, multiple Shamar Moore to try to catfish. No, 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 no. no. I'm gonna tell you something <laughs> super quick. It leads to the first time somebody tried to catfish me. I was in seventh grade, and it was the singing group Imagine. Donald Faison has a little brother named Alameda Faison. And he was in a singing group called Imagine. Later in another episode, I will reveal to you how years later, I actually ended up kind of talking to one of the members of Imagine and he was crazy. So anyway, I already knew I was like, I'm getting getting catfished. So I wasn't taking it seriously at all. It was fun and games to me. I was talking on the phone to a nigga with a nice voice. That's it. Yeah, niggas on the phones that be having nice voices never turn out to be attractive people. Still don't know. Same thing with girls. So anyway, there's an app called Bigo, B I G O, that my friend, my best friend, made me download. Hold up. uh, Pause it. Is this app still exist? It still exists. So what is it? Explain what is Bigo. It, 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 and this is like COVID time, by the oh, way. So so this, Bigo, I'm thinking this is back in the day. This is no, okay. this is current. This is this is I'm 30 something years old, and you trying to catfish my black ass. Okay, okay, okay. I love it. I love it. I love so, it. So now I'm a person that still is confused how the show Catfish exists. I but I it, enjoy it for yes, exactly. I love catfish. Love like I'm catfish. addicted to it. <laughs> Listen, first of all, so I download this app, Bigo. You can it's kind of it kind of has like a similar interface 
like TikTok a little bit. Okay. So it's like the videos, you can go live. If you go live so many times, there's these things called beans. People can like pay, like send you beans. You can make a lot of money on there. You can go live. Is this with the word Ray J was pushing? I, I have no idea what Ray J was pushing. I, You know, I recently only follow Ray J because of his PowerPoint presentations about the Kardashian situation because they were hilarious. But Bigo... Um, you can go live, you can make, you know, like a, apparently like a lot of money, you can have like a family, like it, it was really weird how, how he was describing it to me. And I was like, okay, this sounds more like the house of Darion than me, like kind of developing like this following, like you said, I got, I got, I have a family of people. No, like this is just too much work for me. <laughs> I'm going back to Instagram. But in the meantime, like there were people joining, you know, celebrities joining Bigo, like verified celebrities. So in the midst of this, it's like this Shamar Moore page that like follows me that like, you know, trying to have a conversation or whatever. So I already know I'm being, I already know out the gate, but it's locked down. I'm bored. I'm going to engage. Okay. Okay. So you would get you didn't get you 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 just you start fucking with the catfish. I start fucking with the catfish <laughs> because the catfish said I was pretty. So I was like, I mean, sure, why not? So he was like, How can I, you know, call you? Like get in contact. I have like WhatsApp, or whatever. Like you can WhatsApp me. Sure. So this person is on the WhatsApp. And we're like having conversations. And I was like, I really want to see you. He was like, where do you live? I was like, I live in LA. He's like, oh, I live in LA. I wonder, I wonder. He He's following me. He would try to video chat me, all this stuff. So I'm like, dude, who are you trying to fool? Like, this is just really hilarious. And so, it, you know how you should do the video like, chat and turn off your video and see if their video is off too. No, that's that's the thing that's funny because, like, it would be random times where this person was. I know this is a Nigerian, but you know how somebody will ring your phone and hang up real fast? I feel like that's what this nigga was trying to do so he could say that he had called me. And then he tried to put it back on me. Like, I was playing with him. He was like, Are you playing with me? Like, why are you playing? I was like, I don't even, I said, nigga, because for real, I know I'm not fucking talking to Shamar Moore. I'm going to pull up my WhatsApp to see if <laughs> I still have the message because I'm trying to think if I blocked him or he he blocked me. Did you me see this catfish where it was a Nigerian dude scamming a dude? Did you, did you see that one? Yes, he did say that. This person never asked me for money, by the way. No, but the other, but the one, it was a, it was the uh, white guy, in, I think he was in Kentucky or something. He got catfished like a like a year by a Niger and the dude was under like I need the money for my family. <laughs> right. And so I I was like I got a kid now. He said I had to get that bread. I was like damn. I, that was one of the only catfish. Oh, he I was felt, asking me catfish. He was asking me for my pictures. I found the thread. This is him. Like he don't send me his ID. This like Look at this. This looks. I bet so you I could find that, and that looks like Photoshop too. I do. And so my sister like Googled the address. She's like, "Girl, this is a store for." I was like, "Because it's not Shamar Moore." Yo, he we said, need to get him back going. Like it's so funny. He said, "You can see my home uh, clearly on my driver's license." I was like, "Well, I look forward to FaceTiming you later." He was like, "What are you up to?" I said, "Well, you can call now." He's like, "Yeah." I said, "Yeah." So this is all in a matter of moments, right? He's like, well, what are you up to now? I was like, I'm wrapping up at work. I said, what happened? I'm in my office alone. He was like, why do you have the camera off? Because I'm petty. Yep, yep. He said, yep. I can't see your face. I said, I couldn't see your face. He said, what you do for a, cam uh, a living? I said, uh, why your camera off? Go he's ahead, like, the Nigerian brother's trying to scam. He's like, uh-uh, my camera's on. He said, why can't you just be honest with me? I've been honest with you from the first day I met you, babe. You don't need to hide from me. I was like, hey, I'm going to video chat you when I get to the crib. I'm not hiding. Wrapping up here, so I'm going to go home. He was like, being honest to each other is the best, babe. He's like, text me when you get home. So 
I I try to call him. I I say I'm gonna hit you again. Nothing. He said, "Hey, I saw your missed calls. I have uh, I just have to use the toilet. Uh, what do you have for What do you have for dinner tonight? Like literally, like nigga, you gonna ask me? I like we gonna meet somewhere? <laughs> did, it, did so he had he had a U.S. number that he was what's happening? This from? is yeah, it's a seven one six number. You know, this could be a Google number. So it's like you you, you busy on a call with someone. Of, I was like, why you huh? You can use a Google number through WhatsApp. I don't fucking know. I, like I barely use this shit. Damn. And so he was like, he was like, you must be busy on a call with someone else. Why don't you just open your mouth? I was like, why you keep declining my calls? Oh, it says yeah. It says yes. You can easily use a Google Voice number for WhatsApp. He said, send me a picture of you. And I said, nah, bro, you can look at me via IG. Here's my IG page. He's like, if you can't send me a picture here, don't worry about it. And I just won't ask you no more. And I just stopped responding to him. You should have kept it going and sent him pictures of um, like Vanessa Williams, like another celebrity. No, nah, like what the hell? You saw me on Bigo. You saw my videos. Like any, like. You know what I look like, bro. Like it wasn't like, oh, I it, I just had a, a photo, where you know it's just like the icon where it's like mm -hmm. a silhouette of a, a person. No, like, dang, he tried to strip. That was a Nigerian scam artist. That wasn't even. Yeah, he wasn't even trying I, to catch I noticed, and I should have said that. Listen, sir, I don't know who you trying to fool or uh, what you trying to do in Nigeria, but it ain't got shit to do with me, and I won't be a part of it. Now, Dom, have you ever got? And maybe this is only men, and this is something. I got I've gotten random text messages from somebody saying like hey what's going on and then you'll be like oh hey uh hey what up who this you like it'll be like oh this is Jody you met me the other night I got one today like that I didn't I uh it was a hey but I didn't respond because it, it I already know like I I haven't been nowhere and then I it's like a total <laughs> spill like yeah I met you like and I and if you if you respond negatively like well I guess you don't want to meet me again I was like yeah, I'll, I'll go into a whole spill be like, you sucking these balls or what? Like, I no, really try I, to take them. No, out. I said, uh, I said the city girls line to one of them. What's the city girls line? I was right. like, uh, <laughs> I said, cash at me, spend a couple thousands on my titties and my ass cheeks. What did, then what they say? <laughs> they stopped responding. <laughs> <laughs> But I've gotten, you know what was funny is that like, well, I I know this wasn't um like a spam message. One time I went to Dallas, and this particular time I went to Dallas, I feel like we went like the weekend after my birthday, you know, to turn up, and mm -hmm. I um don't really recall at this spot giving anybody my number, <laughs> and so. But whatever it was, by the time I got back to LA, I had a message from somebody telling me like not to like talk to that nigga no more. But she was like, was telling me, I was like, I don't recall meeting this person. <laughs> and so I was like, I was like, girl, I don't know who this is or who that is. I was like, but you know, like, good luck. And she was like, stop playing with me, you beige, basic bitch. Oh, but so I'm trying to think. So, how did she know you was beige, though? But I ain't beige. No, 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 no. I'm just. I'm saying, like, how did she? I'm guessing he had a type for the light skin. So I said I was petty, and I was like, I'm not beige, and I'm also a nigga. So what you gonna do with that? What she say? She say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like she know. didn't respond. She, but she didn't respond after that. I was waiting. I was waiting for it to update because I put that on Facebook. Next time it comes up on a, a memory, I'll, I'll send it to you. Oh, so oh, she probably was like, "Ooh, I, shit, this is I'm wrong, all wrong." Because <laughs> I was like, "Oh, you want you want you want to come crazy? Uh, I'm about to blow your shit all the way up. I'm finna make your shit really strange." And what did the, did the per, I want? Did the per had the per so had the person ever text you or anything? No, I have no recollection of giving my number to nobody that night. Now, like now, granted, we were your name is the unisex name too. So yeah, but 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 it was like, but no, the person never called me my name. 
Like the girl just hit me going in. I found your number in my nigga phone, blah, blah, blah. But it wasn't like. But was it somebody maybe from LA or you think it was somebody from Texas? Was it? No, it was, so, it was definitely somebody from Texas. Oh, it was a Texas number. It was a Texas number. Yeah, yeah. it was a okay. Texas number. So I was like, I don't even recall. I don't even know. Like it was really strange and weird. And I was like, damn, was I that fucked up where that happened? You might have been. But I don't. I don't recall giving, like, I literally on that trip remember giving my number to one person. That person, how cynical this Gemini is, he did not, like, he don't even have a girlfriend. He don't even want to get married. He still, he too old to be acting this way. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I don't know. It was just really strange. It was just really fucking strange. That's weird. Yeah, that's, ooh. So let's let's get into some funner stuff, man. 50 Cent had to apologize to Meg the Stallion. Shout out to Fafty for doing the right thing and going ahead and making that apology. He can apologize to Lil' Kim too. But what do you need to apologize? Oh, for the for the kids kid discussion. Mm-hmm. Um, but 50 Cent is a prime example of what's wrong with our community. Him, academics, all those black those blogs that was publishing all this misinformation, and likely that nigga's team was paying off to spin this narrative that that girl was lying. Fifty Cent comes out and says that I thought she was lying about the whole situation because when she got asked if she slept with Tori. She was like, huh? No, like she didn't sleep with him. But then it comes out in court that you did. And then I was just like, oh yeah, this bitch lying. Blah, 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 blah. But then, you know, I heard that tape that everybody else heard that from the phone call after, you know, she got shot. And that's what was played in court. And so I was like, oh yeah, that nigga definitely shot her after that. So, you know, I owe her an apology for, for my statements and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's cool and all, but you're still a sucker ass bitch ass nigga. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're gonna talk about Fafty like that on the show? Fuck that <laughs> rabbit looking, and I got big ass teeth, so I can fucking say that shit. As lame ass nigga, go to therapy, mend your relationship with your funny looking ass sons that you wanna talk about kids, and kids are not off look, go be dad. But He's what's wrong with a lot of people and Elaine Walter Roth and a lot of people, if you don't know who she is, she was the first black editor in chief of Teen Vogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's the one that was on um uh, Blackish, right? Yeah, she was on Blackish. Yeah. She has an amazing book. And um, you know, she was saying, like drawing the parallels between Meg the Stallion and Meghan Markle, right? And saying how I would like to see this. Like, what is this comparison? I, 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 you know, I know niggas love to hate Meghan Markle. Oh, no, I not, have no, I have no, every time she speaks, I don't feel like she black like that. She ain't riding with us. She but ain't you in have the car to, with But her. you know what? Well, here's the thing. Unfortunately. She be, pa- she be she low key be trying to pass, yo. She ain't no low doing, key. But she not doing I say high key, she be trying to pass. No, but she not doing nothing different from a lot of niggas. Like it's a lot of niggas out here. I don't that, like. I don't fuck with them either, though. That's I what I'm get saying. It, <laughs> but I'm still saying at the I mean, end I don't of the fuck day, with cats either, though. I get it, but at the end of the day, she's still a nigga. And at the end of the day, like it, like it's the one drop rule. So yeah, her mama black, right? So the niggas, but her mom. We've talked about this, like how her mom did not prepare her for the fucking world. Sorry, that's her, her mom mama. was trying to leave her blackness too though, on the low low. That's what I'm saying. Okay, mom, so- I, I'm I'm a fault of mom. When I think of when I think about like how kids be kind of fucked up, we talk about it when it comes to teaching. When mm-hmm. teachers say, "Yeah, I, I I can teach your kid," but education starts at the home. Behavior, all this stuff, it starts in the home. Kids don't just show up to school acting like this bullying kids. It's them acting out, and 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 so a lot of that responsibility falls back on her mama. I'm. And so I understand, I think she's more aware now based on this situation that has very humbled her and made her realize her blackness. I mean, look at her, look at how her daddy was acting and her motherfucking, um, 
half sister. You know what I mean? And it's just like you, bitch. I ain't really kicking with you like that for you to be even trying to come for me. But money's involved, so get your check. But it's just it, it, Elaine Walter brings to the fact that you know how kind of situ their situations are kind of parallel to a certain degree. And we talk about this movement of being able to protect black women and believe black women. But anytime a black woman speaks up, it's like, but like, you know, like what's, what's happening. And so I think at some point there really needs to be a, a conversation about. I mean, but, but no, I, I, I'm trying to figure out the parallel because I think people just don't give a fuck about Meghan Markle. Like, I think there's more of a, a I discussion think, with Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle, because of her color, so we're gonna bring it. We're gonna bring that into play. But also, Meghan how does she present herself? If she doesn't present herself as a black woman, I, 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 listen, I only know the girl from fucking Suits. Okay, like a TV show. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, it's not like, like, it's not nothing about her makes you think like, yo. Even this is not to me. It's not her complexion because I know see, a lot of white people thing. are still riding. Here, black there's people. probably yes, but in, in hindsight, when you really think about it. It's probably hella light skinned bitches that relate to her, like in the sense of like yes, my cut, my my light skin has afforded me to to be in the room in a lot of spaces that probably if they was like my color or darker that they would not have had those opportunities. Yes. We talked about this before. Yes. I'm aware that a pretty privilege. I'm very well aware that my my looks have gotten me in spaces and afforded me opportunities that somebody that might not be as attractive as me will never see. No, you know right. what I, I mean? mean, even for men, there's a light skin, dark skin privilege. There's like, a light skin, dark like, skin like, privilege. Uh, like Roy always talks about, he's like, dude, you can be angry and mean and a little curmudgeon because you like, but yeah. I'm a dark skin dude. I got to be more jovial and cool yep. with people because so, they're going to assume that I'm going to be mean because I'm the dark big dude. Yep. And and so, so you have to, we can't gaslight her experience based on how she was raised. Unfortunately, her mama did not prepare her. But I, I don't have, have to give a fuck about her. I don't, you don't, she you don't have her, to. Her, her, but I, in in a certain sense, it's like you have to also be aware that it's just not a, a British thing that's happening. There's a global thing that's it's happening. The world nigga laws, most definitely. But it's also, but it also not only affects black people; it affects other races of people. Like I know, I know some Latinas like that are Mexican that are warm or might be just as close of a color to brown like this because they be our color too. Mm -hmm. where it's like i can't wear that foundation color i need to be lighter i'm like bitch but your neck is this color what are you doing <laughs> so with that being said it's similar because of how the attacks have happened where, we're, where we could have been like damn this is fucked up trying to hold the a historically known and that's only if you really follow because to the rest of the world let's keep it a book we don't give a fuck about none Whoa. of that shit over there because that's not how our lives are they never you know like we had the boss people are over through that shit went to war and got our shit kept moving they implemented implemented a new institution of racism over here so with that being said if you're not really the i only listen to 90s music podcast is a show for 80s babies who were 90s kids if you were a no limit soldier then this is your show. If you believe that cash money is not an army, but was a Navy, this is the show for you. If you and your friends ever tried to sing a song written by Escape, In Vogue, Shy, or Voiced Men at a talent show during middle school, this is your show. The I Only Listen to 90s Music Podcast is a bunch of 80s babies talking about all the songs and things that we loved when we were kids and teenagers. So if you went to the skating rink and you were at a lock-in, this is the, the show for you. If you think that Tevin Campbell um, was the original prince of R&B, this is the show for you. If you don't understand the, the conflict between Monica and Brandy, but you're kind of on Monica's side and understand why Brandy got punched, this is the show for you. Make sure that you tune in, subscribe, click the little subscribe link. We're here. We're going to talk about all things 90s music. This is the show for you. You ain't done your research. If you ain't really know what you, if you walked blindly into it, if that's true, they would have crucified her just how they did fucking Diana. And Diana wasn't even fucking with them niggas no more. Left that nigga and you see how they still did her.
Yeah, he still killed so, her. Well, allegedly, so, they killed her. So, in regards to Meg the Stallion, it's like, think about how, in hindsight, she still tried to protect her abuser. Just based on what our lives are as Black people. Mm-hmm. But who would I Megan try to protect? Huh? Who did Megan try to protect that was Black? That, she I mean, never... That's- she never, she never, she didn't want to tell that Tory Lanez had shot her. No, 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 no. I'm talking about Meghan Markle. I'm saying who is black is she protecting? I'm I mean, trying to see the comparison. To a, certain, to a certain extent, like her kids still black though, they hella light, like they pass it, but she's no, still. No, but, I'm, but I get, no, I'm with you with the Megan. I'm saying in the sense Megan, of, like, I can't like, like I'm saying, oh, I'm saying in the sense of like how she was framing it and what we'll do is post the clip and see if how people engage with the post because I don't remember verbatim what, but how Elaine so was. There's a video for this. There's a video. There's a real video for this. And uh, but Elaine, I'm, I'm gonna Roth, plug it in here and let people decide right after this. And so Elaine Walter Roth was pretty much saying that their lives are pretty similar based on the abuse that they've taken, but there was nobody really to stand up for them where everybody decided to like tear them down. So like both of them have become the villains in their situation where they've experienced different levels of abuse. That's not okay. And we speak up and we say, look after our people and we don't be extending that courtesy to them. And so in the case of Meg, when you, you know, think about it in hindsight, every, every, a lot of, not every black woman, many black women that subscribe to Massage Noir were, you know, calling her a liar was saying this wasn't mm-hmm. true. And even after the verdict came out, it's still a, a, in this phone call that really gives you the full picture of what happened, the grand spectrum. And don't forget, he also beat Kelsey ass, just like we talked about. Mm-hmm. Everybody was drunk. We, Like we said, we know alcohol was involved with this night. If people were sober, do we think it would have went different? Possibly, but we'll never know. Mm-hmm. But here we are where we, we have people Based on it's niggas, I was like, I'll be forgetting that I fucked they be like, yeah, I'm like, when did this happen? I was like, oh shit, that did happen. You know, the <laughs> niggas like, but I don't be counting a lot of niggas who's like, if, if if you don't make me comment, with, but Dom, I'm with you. Like, I'm with you with everything from me, with Megan the Stallion. I'm trying to figure out the Megan Markle part. <laughs> I, I because I feel like she think about it from this, like, okay, so whereas 50 Cent. Mm-hmm. has been on record saying these terrible things about Meg- guys i'm having a deep dialogue in the group chat about this whole Meghan markle prince harry thing if we are able to look at her experience through the lens of archetypes and patterns and see her experience as a macro example of micro realities that impact all of us if you are a marginalized person in this country then it's really interesting to unpack who gets to be a valid victim when you compare the reaction from our community to the victimization of meg markle the royal versus meg the stallion the rapper both black women who've been victimized in very different ways. And what you will see is very similar patterns of disengagement, disinterest, and sometimes a deep-seated disdain. Why do we disqualify Black women from this protected class of victims that seem to earn our undivided support? Who earns our empathy? I can name a lot of damsels in distress who happen to be white women that we stand up for. And I just cannot understand why our community cannot seem to do the same for our Megs. Because whether you look like Meg and Markle or you look like Meg the Stallion and your trauma is anywhere in between what they've experienced, for some reason, your pain ain't valid enough. This ain't right. He wasn't there. He does. He has no. He ain't probably never even met this young lady. Pierce Morgan would be Meghan Markle's Fifty Cent. Okay. Where but he has. I don't moved. talk about Pierce Morgan. That's what's it got to do but with black it, people? But it's still whether you subscribe to this world of or, or, or British journalism and all this stuff, the girl still experienced, you know, bullying. You know, all this yes, stuff, yes. death threat, threat yes. to all this stuff. 
And you want to know what is still, regardless of not, if she's just now realizing how black her black ass is, her light skin ass is, the bitch is black. And so she experiences. Does Megan have one black friend? I don't know. Like, nigga, she got black ass cousins. She wasn't hanging out with her white family. She she didn't hang out with the black family. Yeah, she was not kicking it with them like that. The daddy was not invited to her her uh ceremony they try to play that i don't think that nigga was ever invited i think you know he came to the wedding didn't he no that nigga had a heart attack or stroke or something he did not come to that wedding when she was in the car she was in that car with her mama and her mama had that nose ring oh they- yeah 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 no you're right you're right you're right you got it now you got i'm, I'm over on other computer research. and it's then and this all goes back to racism sexism colorism and whatever you like it's niggas like hey a bit it was a black it was a it was a nigga in the palace who was there who was there legally because you know them niggas was probably this entire time throughout history probably bringing black women in there doing sexual crazy of things course to black women anyway so mm-hmm. hey Hey, I got the. I, I'm on papers. I I got this shit legally. Just let me be great. So it's like, so I mean, in the forms of the abuse and the things that have happened to black women, whether you like give a fuck or not, I can see how she drew that parallel. We'll put drop the clip. We'll yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get, I, yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm. It's, if, if you've already heard the clip of it, let us know what y'all think on that accord. But fifty, he did apologize. He fucked up. Um. Uh, I mean, I, I still want him to look Kim the beef, though. I don't know. This is, I'm, I'm messy. I just want them to stay beefy. Because you're a nigger. <laughs> I know. I don't want that ever to end. He do need to apologize for the kid part, but I want I them to continue to be. I feel like at some point, like, niggas got It's like I, want, I don't want Ja Rule it's and like, the But it's corny, either. though. Like, it's, it's, it's corny. Like whatever, but it's none of my business. I don't have to sleep with that nigga. He's not my baby daddy. He does not pay my bills. So right. moving on. All right, the Golden Globes. Let's jump into a lot of stuff happening at the Golden Globes. Hey, the uh, Golden Globes is very black. Yeah, I, Gerard Carmichael was the first black host of the Golden Globes. Really? It wasn't like somebody. I believe he is. Hold on, let me see. That's wild. I thought I heard that he was the first. Yeah. He I cracked a lot him. of jokes that were hilarious. Called he is out the first black person to host the Golden Globes. Yep. Talked about uh Scientology not being able to find that one woman. Can we trade Tom Cruises? Like he turned to, can we yo, he really pushed the envelope. And I'm not mad at him. Oh, I fuck with Jabari Kamarko. I fuck And with it's him. funny because he was just like, uh, what else did he say? He was like, it's funny because the Hollywood foreign press is very, he's like, I ain't going to say they're racist, but they ain't have no people that no people of color, no black people in the Hollywood foreign press uh, until George Floyd died. And I was like, yo. Hey, no, real talk. Europe, is, Europe has had more racial, um, I wouldn't say upheaval, correction because of George Floyd than we did. They did. Like they 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 had a lot like this must have been how the sixties were, sixties and seventies were for black people and eighties for black people in America. Cause they doing all kinds of stuff over in the UK and, and France. Like we gotta redo some shit. We gotta we gotta redo everything. Yeah, and we'll and I'll still be interested to see because like a lot of places have been pulling certain things. And I'm not gonna say globally, but like I know definitely on the state side. Yeah. So we'll really see what what this like percentage pledges. There's this whole movement about this. Uh like where you are to reveal, like they kind of call out certain companies to reveal like what their device diversity numbers are. Um but that can get ugly. That can get ugly real quick. It can, listen, I, I just feel like this. I I be feeling like that about my place of employment, but Me too. That's all where, that really where they didn't give us niggas a bonus, but they told us how much they increased and they gave me a blanket and a candle instead. <laughs> Is that the same one that got stole by the homeless people? <laughs> if, if you listen to... Uh, Two episodes ago, uh, I put the in the show notes where Dom describes for 10, 15 minutes how her job 
was totally ransacked and robbed by homeless vagrants. Is there any rap? Is there any update on this? I forgot to ask. Is any update on this? Yo, the vending machine dude is the plug apparently because he got he got rank. So the guy, well, I'm not gonna say the guy that feels like he owns them. So you know how mm-hmm. like a lot of people having you know picking up on that business and like having vending machines in different places to yep. create passive income, right? So the sprinter that got stolen has been recovered okay. because the guy who owns the vending machines made a few phone calls and within several hours they didn't had this our sprinter recover what, he got, now, where, the where, got it, where, where did it come from where did it, where, where was the we found they found the sprinter in like brea which is like not super far uh and then they stole the catalytic converter so that was it so they had it taken care of told to back to somebody showed up he had somebody show up put a new catalytic converter in and we good but they still ain't fixed this man vending machines oh i said this was a month ago when we gonna get our snacks back Oh, so y'all can't even get no snacks. He ain't even got like ain't, ain't no. That's the only vending machine in there was hit that one. Cause one of the the it's two it's two snack machines and then it's like a soda machine. I don't fuck with that shit, but I fuck with the snacks. You know, yeah. maybe I want some Welch's fruit snacks sometimes. Maybe I want some Funyuns. But yeah. they busted the glass out of both of them. Uh, yeah, man. Like it's it's. I look whatever but i just i just i just honestly like it'd be shit that i just be like ah whatever let's i just go, want like, let's get back going globe but i appreciate that's why i was getting back to gerard carmichael yep. like really pushing the envelope cracking like real hilarious funny jokes mm-hmm. don't appreciate him telling rihanna that it's okay to take her time with the album bitch we done and i can say that to rihanna because that's how me and riri are girl with my camera man <laughs> i don't know what you're doing but word on the curve is that this has been recorded since before you had an infant for years supposedly it's a reggae there's a reggae rihanna album out there that hasn't come out i it, listen give it to us we understand that you are re- performing at the Super Bowl that you said that you would never perform at, but give us a new single, please. Like you all luscious and your titties all full of milk. Give us something. Like yeah, we right. need some milk. We need some milk. But I, I mean, she don't have to though. That's the thing. She wants to. She wants to. She thinks this is funny, and it's not funny. It's like it was cute at first. Now we just annoyed. Like how Beyonce is playing with these visuals, but uh, it's okay. It's okay. So, Whatever. <clears throat> but it, it was very black. We yeah. have Angela Bassett won Best Supporting Actress for Wakanda Forever. I wonder if they're gonna try to give her the, the um, Oscar for this too. I'm interested to see if that's gonna go down. Uh, that's because because technically, guys listening. These are supposed to be a preview to what the people could potentially win at the Oscars. So it was weird because I believe, funny enough, didn't Eddie Murphy win the Golden Globe for being Jimmy Early in Dream Girls? And lost it at the at the Oscars. And lost it. Funny enough, my Facebook dad is my Facebook memories today has a memory where I was like, y'all was playing with Eddie Murphy because he did the thing as fucking Jimmy Early. It was some reason. What was the reason that they said it was that it's something hey, that happened though? No, I feel like they was been playing with Eddie for years. Cause has, did he did he ever win or did he win for uh my name? Uh Dolomite is my name. No, he's never won anything. Never never won, never won. Yeah, so they, they need to stop playing with Eddie. Um, and so and honestly, what he won last night, it wasn't a war, it was like I actually no. Yes. Yeah, so whatever what Eddie Murphy won last night was like the some achievement. It's like the Cecil E was it Cecil E. Brown uh lifetime achievement because he was talking about how long yep. he had been in the M- industry. Um but so but but we'll get back to Eddie Murphy. Uh you had Quinta that won yep. and her uh, best best show show 
for Abigail and then, then you also have William Tyler. Everybody Adam? hates Chris. Yeah, William Tyler Adams, I think, or William no, Tyler. It's not his last name. It's like William Tyler, oh, the guy that is not <laughs> the dude from. Uh, I want to get a brothers. I want to get a brothers roses. Uh, it's Tyler a James Williams. Listen, we had half of the name correct yes. maybe in the reverse order. Tyler James Williams or Tyler Williams, <laughs> James, whatever, Tyler, yep. Will, whatever. Also very deserving, long time coming. Uh, and it was some other brown people that, you know, like that one um, last night as well. It was very diverse. I think they realizing that like, y'all just be out here giving niggas shit, Anglo-Saxon shit just to be giving it. But uh, definitely happy for Jennifer Coolidge, though uh, I love The White Lotus the first season, still kind of feeling conflicted about season two. Um, but that's just me. Some people are enjoying it. I was talking to my homeboy about it today. <laughs> and I was like, wait, you enjoy what? I am. I was underwhelmed in an overwhelming way. Yeah, I mean, I'm interested if Angel Bass is going to win because – it might be Jamie Lee Curtis to win Best Supporting Actress at the Gospel. For what? For everything. Um, oh, Must must Fall? No, uh, hold on. Um, it is, I'm going to tell you the movie. Because I've been just hearing everybody saying that she's killed this shit um, in this movie. Uh, come on, Jamie Lee Curtis. It is for... Oh, it is for every, everything, everywhere, all at once. Oh, I, need okay. to, I still need to watch that. I still need to watch that. I heard it's real, real good. Okay. I like Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, that's that's one of those. So if there's, you know, if uh, if, if you're talking about like, like white women that brothers always had a thing for, Jamie Lee Curtis is on there. She is. Um, my friend Ken, um, we talk about this on our episode of Favorite Horror Films. And he's like titties. <laughs> <laughs> and and the scene in True Lies. Have you ever seen True Lies with Arnold She's Schwarzenegger? Dancing. Yeah. The brothers was like, all right, I get it. I get it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Sigourney Weaver's on there. Uh, we can add her to that as well on the brothers list. She kind of has circle eyes. And people that kind of like have more i mean i i know our eyes are circled but y'all know i mean like the eye socket like yeah. like where instead but of brothers uh, with Weaver, though. yeah brothers i was like Sigourney people Weaver. with circle eyes are always intriguing because they always kind of be like a little crazy to me <laughs> um so i'm a little off sit back and think about it think about some of the chaos that could could have potentially happened in your life three brad pitt angelina jolie was to pre bad brad pitt brothers yeah I, pre brad pitt pitt Okay, it's weird. It was something about the Billy, the Billy Bob era of Angelina Jolie. That's what's because honestly, I'm gonna tell you that era, I would have fucked Billy Bob and excuse my language. But you, but mean, Billy Bob messed with sisters though too, because you know Cinder Williams is his ex-wife before Angelina Jolie. Oh wow, I did not know that. So people don't know something. Cinder Williams. She's the light-skinned girl in Mo Better Blues. Oh, so he might not look my way. So it uh no, I he, feel, he was with somebody else that was dark skinned too though. Hold on, let me go to Billy Bob. But I feel like it was something, it was always something about Billy Bob to me that just would just ooh turn me on. I don't like and this is before he had sex with Holly Berry and that and that random weird scene where it, it didn't need to happen, but sure <laughs> make me feel good. Yeah, the let made me feel good part was just kind of like, yeah. It just, it kind of blew me. I was surprised, I'm going to be honest, that we didn't get kind of more like acting roles from Puff Daddy. I mean, he tried. So. I mean, he tried though. Puffy tried now. Remember uh, Raising in the Sun, the movie? Oh, yeah. No, no. I thought that he was up in his breakout role. I had to go, but I don't know why I really thought that he was, he did a stint on Broadway. I'm slow. No, no, I don't, I don't, hold on. I, he may, you know what? He may have did the Raising the Sun Broadway version uh, first. 
Hold on, let me see. I, Cause I think that, that the movie version may have came from, I'm just trying to make sure, hold on. No, right, we it was only the movie. It was only. just the movie? Okay. It movie. Yeah, it was just the movie. Cause it was him and Sanaa Lathan in there. Yeah, I, um, I be telling people, I'm like, that's a dream deferred, like a raisin in the sun. Yep. And oh, Felicia favorite? Rashad was in there, played the mom. Uh, yeah, Lisa, I was going to uh, say, I, I remember Felicia Rashad and then uh, the other line my friend and I say, well, life for me ain't been no crystal stack. Yeah. <laughs> Langston Hughes, dropping that Langston Hughes in there. Um, I mean, and then, and then, I mean, then, you know, to go, um, shout out to Eddie Murphy, who has uh, got a $850,000 lawsuit against a man who says that he was his son. And he's been going through a comedy doing that as well. Um, Only $850,000? And what? Wait, I am... I'm... How? <laughs> and I so guess the confusion is, is that because Eddie Murphy got hella kids? Yeah. So he might have forgot that this was might have been his son or not. Maybe that's why it took him a while to figure it out. Um, Brando oh Murphy. This guy got Brando Murphy more gigs in the end. He could get a cease and desist letter from Murphy's team. Then they wait, 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 you say his name is Brando? Brando Murphy. Wow, and wow, not Brando Murphy. Like, like Marlon Brando. I know, I know. <laughs> but I'm looking up his picture. Nigga, he has. He, he looks has like Eddie Murphy, IMDb. don't he? He has an IMDb, my guy. As Brando Murphy, right? Yes. Brando Murphy is an American comedian turned entrepreneur who is ruling the crypto world through his venture bigger than race. He has uh, astounded people with valuable. No, no, no. You're thinking the wrong person. That Brando Murphy is an old dude. I'm just looking it up now. No, this is this yeah. person is born June 7th, 1987. Okay, because that's another Brando Gemini. Murphy. Okay, because okay. Brando Murphy popped up as a oh no, this is the same dude. He just looked old in this picture from far away. I'm sorry. Continue. Yo, this is hilarious because this person is a Gemini. Yo, he has, he he was in Bratz, like, they called him Loner Boy. He has some credits on IMDb. This is Eddie Murphy, role is mine. This Eddie Murphy role is mine, not yours, Mike. But then they have him <laughs> as Brando Robinson Pointer. Hey. You know what he did? He changed the name to Brandon Murphy and didn't tell. He probably just kind of left it be out there. Uh -huh. Like, is Eddie your dad? I mean, I, don't, I mean, that's my mom. Yeah, that's probably what he did. But didn't say it was, but he didn't tell you he wasn't either. Like, this is, this is hilarious. This is freaking <laughs> hilarious. Brando Murphy. I, oh, I, why does he look so familiar? Cause he looks like Eddie Murphy a little bit. <laughs> he does a little bit. Hey, hey Eddie but... might have low key had to be like, hold on, which who is your? That's mama? probably like, what he did before he got that. Before he put the lawsuit in, he made sure like, hold on, let me. Who is his mama? Oh man, I ain't never been to Cincinnati. Like you know, be like, I ain't never been to Cincinnati. <laughs> I'm like no, that ain't that ain't mine. <laughs> been thinking. I mean, if he if he born in eighty seven. He might have been to Cincinnati and was like, ain't nobody tell me nothing. Well, that, but, you know, if he was born earlier, I think he could say that because that's what Eddie was touring. 87 Eddie was really in, only in L.A. Like pre-83 Eddie, he might if he was my age, then he could be like, maybe that was his. But post, uh, like, you know, coming to America and all that, that's going to be hard. Oh, this is wild. Brand I don't know who, who's – if I, like – I don't even know whose kid I could pass as, like, or or even try to say that, like, uh, like. That's that's just very hilarious, because I'm going down a list of people that people have said that I look like, and I could never even pass. Yeah. But. Yeah, it, it's funny because. It's just very funny because I was named after um, Dominique Devereaux on Dynasty. So, I, yeah, that's that's how I got Dominique. 
And so when I really think in the piece of the great Diane Carroll, we and just so talk, we talk I, about her all the time. Yeah. So when I look at images of Diane Carroll, as far as like style, cause like I having vintage pieces, I was like, could I pass as Diane Carroll's kid? Not, Probably like, this, not. not like Brando. <laughs> yeah, not like Brando. But then I think of, um, you know, other people and Diane, like, it's just hilarious. Um, you know, I would probably, I remember one time my dad was like, has anybody ever told you that you look like Kelly Rowland? When that's that when, can work. Was, that can when she was on Empire, but shoot, Kelly used to be my client when I worked at yeah. SAC. <laughs> and and I was, hey, I need you as a body double real quick. I got to go somewhere. I need you to stand I, in. Yo, I was on her Instagram live not too long ago and she didn't even remember me. So I was like, girl, you was, and I didn't want to be a creep and tell her some of the shoes she had in her closet. But I was like, I used to help you at sex. <laughs> and so I should have been like, girl, you got this Rockstar by Valentino. It's like a deep army green color. You she might have... already gave that away to the Goodwill by now. And I was like, and if you gave that away, I'm really mad because I only sold you that shoe because of who you were. Because I had it on hold for me. And we right. never, we, the company only got like, Saks is only so big of a company. It's not mm -hmm. like Nordstrom. And they only ordered so many of that shoe. And I was like, it you gave up your your copy for her, nigga. It was a guarantee. It's a thousand dollar. That shoe was a thousand dollars. Oh well, then that said you got that sale. You got yeah, I, I'm like, I'll take the commission off of that. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's like there's so many different people, and I'm just like, yeah, no, that person doesn't look like me. So yeah, Brando, man, shout out to Brando Murphy. Like, and and I know how he hustled it because he just people just assume because Eddie got so many kids. Yeah, you that's, know that's literally how. Yeah, uh, this is what's gonna happen in Nick Cannon too. This is this is a preview to what's gonna happen in Nick Cannon. Yeah, because Eddie ain't got that many. Eddie, I think, got eight or nine, which is still a lot. But yeah. Nick is is in the double digits, so this Eddie is going to happen. Has to Nick. I think his well, no, maybe them kids are like toddlers now with that white woman. Uh, but I mean, he's got like eight or nine. Even I think even with yeah, that, he got I, about eight, eight nine because he, he finally started claiming male B kid. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. you got to put on the papers. That's <laughs> niggas. Like, I was the other day, I like reviewed that whole situation. Oh, word. And it sounds like they had this crazy, intense, like, rendezvous. And I'm not going to say rendezvous, but it probably lasted for an extended, extensive period of time because she was saying how. Like they had just met at some party or whatever, and they had like or, or however they met, but they really hit it off and had this chemistry, and they spent the night together. And then he was asking her to move in with her, giving her his credit cards, all this stuff, and just having a you know like just really a whirlwind romance. They call a it. romance, and then she turns up pregnant, and then he switches up on her. So how long? He love they bombed her. They date? Not that long. They didn't really date that long. And I was like, damn, Eddie, like, Eddie it'd be the switch up. Kid. I'm like, I'm like, Eddie Murphy was out here but love bombing niggas. But also, if, if did you go into the fact that he had just got off a, a, a no marriage right after that went straight to Mel B? Who, who? Tracy Edmonds. Babyface's ex. Remember, they they had got, they were married for like three weeks and they got annulled. I don't even remember that because she's yes, like, you yes, that was them and Mel B were back to back. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. No, no, you, I'm not giving him a pass. You didn't, for, you for, didn't for put you didn't ask her to mention she was on birth control, you didn't put a condom on, and these are the things that happen. I don't be feeling sorry for niggas. Yeah. But I I'm don't. Saying, he didn't do he really jumped into a straight into another relationship and didn't probably think about he it was about, in, like wouldn't i mean yeah he got it like and he if he, he and he could flaunt it but asking somebody to move into your house yeah but i could always kick you out but having a baby with you is different like like you i'm with you now like <laughs> i might only want you there for six months you know what i'm saying like just to have somebody i feel living like i feel like because eddie feels like a dude and i know a lot of brothers like this particularly older brothers too though and maybe i end up be like this later on where they cannot be in a relationship yeah, I know people like that. Yeah, like so he has got to have a woman. He's got to have a woman. He's my age, that nigga like that, and I'm like, nigga, grow up. Like so some brothers got to have somebody living with them, and got to have a woman, you know. So maybe that's his his thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
he just needs that that's his part of his his get down i don't know eddie murphy mama used to be my client her friend Ooh. her friend that she was shop with was a, a nightmare and then once i had to like kind of check her it was cool but they asked they they would try to take me to lunch like several times and I, be, and I would have went had it just been his mom and mm. had the, the lady been friendly like out the gate but i felt like once i like had to correct her a couple times like she was cool like but nah i wasn't dealing with that it's like i get an hour lunch i like and i already did which spent several hours with you and you think i'm gonna go spend my lunch break with y'all and I, I need every time, time i would come in every time but eddie murphy mama is a sweetheart she's such a sweetheart all right as we wrap up we have to give you a tj holmes update tj holmes is officially getting divorced y'all his wife has spoken via lawyers saying she's disappointed and hopes the best for their child and i'm gonna uh you know change it into you know nigga explaining in a second for you all um you know the child and the the, the what she's went through and all that um of translation I can't believe this nigga is out here uh, with this white woman <laughs> going around the streets kissing and stuff, and our daughter can see it on TV. Yep. Trans All I'm gonna say is this: I'm just happy it wasn't an iOS release because y'all niggas love to drop iOS press releases, not spell checking, not double oh. checking. <laughs> you know, before y'all hit send. No, the they was this is through the attorney, so it was official. So that's what I'm saying. I'm happy, but you know, it's just very unfortunate when things like this happen because i'm just a i think my prayer is for my partner to always just be honest and transparent with me and not embarrass me and let me and know that's, and that's probably more the thing even if someone does cheat on you you can come back from or even you know sustain your stuff even if y'all don't stay together but at least some kind of friendship if you if you ain't getting caught out there where you looking fucking dumb like right. in public like if it, you just got caught it's like oh we broke up i was cheating or she was cheating we just broke up it's no harm no foul because nobody really knows why on that bigger level but if it's out there and like you know you know it's all on facebook or instagram or something like right check out your, your ladies hanging out with stephen jackson from the san antonio spurs you like fuck. i mean well, shit, we yeah. Are more <laughs> like, yeah i i would just say that that's that's my prayer because like that's just so humiliating and then i mean he's been humiliating her low-key for a long time and yep. i'm just glad that she has extra stage left and i hope there's no prenup. i mean she kind of had to at this point right i mean he kind of made her yeah, made yeah. Her it was like no like at this point i'm just like i hope girl i hope you ain't sign no prenup and i hope you gouge that nigga. i mean Get your money. What is gouging? Never mean? remarry, so that nigga gotta pay you alimony for the rest of your life. You feel the same if it was this, if it was this was reversed? You would you be like, I need that nigga to gouge niggas, this woman? Niggas, niggas, bitches don't be shit either. So it goes both ways. Cool. All right. All right. Because I forgot who it was. Who's gonna get hit for uh spouse support? They said it's gonna be crazy on them. That's getting divorced. Oh, Tia Mari. They say Corey coming from them pockets. Oh, of course, cause he. She, never mind. You ain't gonna say that. That's no, just, no. Don't don't hate on I, it, cause you just cool. No, 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 no. I was gonna say something really petty, and that ain't right, because I feel like the, the, the how my industry has been working, and the people I've meeting, I don't want nobody to come and pull a clip, and I said yeah, something, I and I was just. But like, I'm just saying, let support. that brother be. You do him if that's true. I don't know if that's true. I, 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 I could totally, totally, I, like I could hard. totally yeah. see that being true. Uh, especially, and I could see them potentially not having a prenup because they got together kind of so young. Yeah. So, um, that's unfortunate, but I would, I could see that happening. That's how, that's what happened. You remember that happened to Adele's husband. She had to pay out all that money. Uh, Kelly Clarkson also had to have, uh, give that man a big ass payout. Yeah, so hey, look, uh, the the king of it all, Kevin Federline. That's our. That's the king. That's the king right there. That that's the king. I said, like not long after he got with Britney Spears and they broke up. Then did he go back to the chick that was on motherfucking um Moesha for a little Mar bit? Uh, they got uh, back. Uh, Sh uh, Sh Char, Char Jackson. Jackson. 
Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that was all a setup. You think I so? Like was, I felt your mind is supposed to be conspiracy and theory and like no, no 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 because i don't know if he got back with her though i feel like they were seen together i, I feel like they briefly got back together and i was like okay oh, no, okay i can see that they got back i didn't like they didn't get married because they were they weren't married before so i think they was just they yeah they was married kids. before but but they they got kids too right you had kids he yeah. left her for britney spears right right Man, Ooh, maybe damn. they lied it the conspiracy Give me, give me more. I, the only reason I, I would, the conspiracy would have held tighter for me if it was a brother, she was with a brother. Then I'd be like, ooh, they was running that double back. No. But I don't know if you can control Kevin Federline like that, to, you know, to be able to do that. Listen, that nigga will still get paid just like how he was a part of that whole conservatorship bullshit. I'm telling you, it was all, I feel bad for that girl. Yeah. I wish, Britney Spears, I hope you are somewhere living your best life and you are getting the the help that you need and relaxing and stop putting spicy racy photos on instagram and dancing and dancing well <laughs> but i love you the britney album was the britney spears album that i bought and Never i love it yeah it, it was this i'm a slave for you because shit was produced by pharrell and them so it hit different. It was good. I'm going to go listen to this after this. Yeah, I don't even look. One time I had to list that. I've only, I think I've only bought like five white artists in my life. What are those five white artists? John B. Never um, listened to a John B. album in my life. Really? No. I got multiple John B. albums. Mm -hmm. Damn. Cool. David Bowie is another one. Um, Oh no, I got more than five. Uh I got Michael McDonald greatest hits. Um what what's wrong with Michael McDonald greatest hits? That voice annoys me. What on my own. This was you not tripped. You, you, you better not be talking about Michael McDonald to St. Louis's own. Get some of nerves. Oh. <laughs> okay, next album. Hall and Oates, a greatest hits. Okay. Paul and those greatest hits. Eminem. I mean, that's kind of okay. Yes. Obvious. Uh, it was this. It was this singer back in the early two thousands that was dope as hell. Neo, so called Remy Shand. He had this song, "Take a Message." Man, anybody you listen to that song is so dope. And he never came out of the album. <laughs> like it was on. He was signed to Kedar Massenburg. Like he was on the same label with Erica Badu. At one point, they came out at the same time. Damn near. So that Remy Shan was another one. Uh, Beatles, obviously, I have the Beatles greatest hits uh, as well. Um, and I got a couple. I got some. Got some other ones too. Oh, Tina Marie. Tina. Oh, wow. So none of these people. <laughs> I know. I liked Tina Marie. Is cool. Am I going to search Tina Marie? I like Square Biz. Oh. But Yo, God, you got to get your white like white artist stuff <laughs> i have spice girls britney spears huge backstreet boy fan enjoy in sync don't have that no no uh have listened to eminem it was a lot of chaotic for me but i like you know wanna fuck with shady because why because shady will fucking kill you so i i i mean that's what I remember. I feel like those were the album, and like I said, the Britney Spears album. Um, oh, oh, Rage Against the Machine. Too. I got Rage Against the Machine too. A lot of Rage huh? Against the Machine. I got a lot of Rage Against the Machine oh, too. Okay, Mandy Moore. I like Candy, and then she had the song called "Walk Me Home," that was really cute. But yeah, so I didn't really. Cause like our household was very black. Like it was a certain period of time. Like we were only when we got Barbies, we were only getting black Barbies. Yeah, yeah. You know all that stuff. So our household was very heavy on that. But then as you grow up and things change, and you, it, I, I I enjoy Bar Barbara Streisand. Okay. Um, I have the Guilty album with her and uh, Barry Gibb is on vinyl. I got Boney um, James. I got Boney James. Jazz okay, I know who that. I know who Boney James is. And Dave Cos too. And Dave Cos too. Um, there's a song by this artist called Daily, 
that I like. Well, Daily's another one. I got Daily's albums. I got those. Yeah, I'm like, I like Look Up. So yep. Daily's dope. Daily, Daily is, is dope. dope. But uh yeah, that's that really it's more it's more I got. I'm just, I mean it's more I got, but yeah, I I felt because I like like top 40. I felt it was a period of time I felt very pressured to like kind of <laughs> listen to like black people's black people stuff and because I was getting teased at school you know uh, I got teased a little bit because people always felt like I was a, a twisted Oreo that I was like a black like like they're like you black but like you white but I'm like that's just a regular Oreo but they would say twist or I was like, okay, sure, whatever. I think the girl that you trying to say that's trying to be black is twisted, but whatever. Yeah. I'm gonna let y'all niggas have it. So I felt, you know, like I still it, I still could never get heavy into rap like that, but I always enjoyed really good um R and B music. Beastie and Boys, so, we got a Beastie Boys too, since you brought yeah. up white artists. I like Intergalactic. Intergalactic is there's a there's a conversation I had the other day that there's two different sets. There's black Beastie Boy songs that people like, and then there's white Beastie Boy songs, and they're not the same songs. Probably not. They're not. Like black people love Intergalactic Planetary. Like every black person I know loves that song. Paul Revere, black people like that song. But black people don't like uh girls, dim, 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 like all those like real party like songs. Like people don't black people don't listen to them. I feel like I feel like oh, like you had the right right to the fight uh, right to party uh like uh, to boogie I like, yeah I I'm like, I like that okay well maybe your friends were right maybe they were picking up like because <laughs> I'm explicitly putting a line in the sand for Beastie Boy songs yeah no I like I like a lot I still go back and visit like um uh, did you like to- sabotage by Beastie Boys. I don't even know what that is. Okay, that's a. Re- you, that's well, a I know, uh, I know, I do know Nirvana's, and we're all just in a spirit, just like Teen Spirit. That's a black song. Um, that's but then okay, so when okay, this is hella random. Chris Brown, when he was performing at the VMAs, mm-hmm. somehow incorporated Teen Spirit into his performance, and it was really dope. And then it went into like Beautiful People. I don't even know that song. Oh, okay. I told you I've been listening to Chris Brown for real, for real. Like, I know. Since, uh, it's okay. I, don't lo- I don't love these hoes. That's that's. I think that's the last song I remember from him. Oh, these hoes ain't loyal. I was gonna say, oh, loyal. I was like, okay. <laughs> I, I don't love these hoes. Is Nate Dog? I think Shit. it's beautiful. People is be- way before that. So. Okay, okay. And then the last song I love from him is uh, it's Usher? a it's an album cut. No, it's an album cut. It's the joint oh. with Nas. Uh, Mirage. Uh see, beautiful people is on that album. See, okay. I was dating a girl and I downloaded that album for her, and I then I, I was like, I don't need this shit. Or was got? I didn't album? really care for Mirage, but I'm like, I know, I know what you're saying. Like, it's good. Yeah. Cause that was on the purple, whatever purple album. No, where that's, you that's on Fortune. Okay. Yeah, because oh, I like, like this SWV joint. The SWV joint too. Yeah, she ain't you. So that's yeah. on uh X. So uh, but because initially fame, it was supposed to be fame and fortune. You, you know, that was the first time that nigga right? tried to give us 48 songs. Then he come out with a triple disc too. Oh, I don't know nothing about that. Listen, that might have been heartbreak on a full moon, but then they ended up splitting it, but fame. Fame had deuces on it. So that was like his first studio album after the whole debacle because he was doing the mixtapes and stuff. I like so. deuces too. I'm sorry. I, I mean, I mean that was before. Yeah. Fun fact. I heard the very first version of deuces. I used Is this to in that Kevin McCall song originally? Yep. I kicked it with him. He told me how he made it. I met him randomly. So we was kicking it like for a while when I first moved to L.A. And then he played it because he told me how he, like, I think he made it not too long after he had, like, dropped out of college because, you know, he was playing football somewhere and he really wanted to do music and he made that in his mama, his grandmama basement. 
Because his parents said he couldn't come home, apparently. I'm like, you know how black parents yeah. when they come to school. Damn. So, I, I, yeah. I, I, know that, I, think that, I, I thought I knew that was Kevin McCall's song. Originally. Yeah. So everything was the same, pretty much, except for Tiger's verse. Tiger wrote his own verse. Oh, so was he singing Chris's parts originally? Mm-hmm. Oh, so, so the rap was part like was the rap. His rap part stayed though. Yeah, but the Chris's singing was was Kevin McCall singing those parts. Uh, well, on the original, on like, the original, the, the first, yeah, yeah, because like, he just probably. demoed it and Chris just took his part, like just took yeah. the parts. <clears throat> Damn, we're gonna talk about how Kevin McCall fumbled the bag, but that's another story, another thing. Well, Don, where can people hit you up at? <laughs> St. Angeles, St. Angeles.com. Y'all know I got the candles. Y'all know we'll have the live promo code when you spend fifty dollars or more. Somebody, uh, in the comments said, Can you change your channel name to to, to, to whiskey? I, I couldn't find you at first. I you know what I did that, but because but because I'm gonna be adding layers to it. Oh, so use like fuck it. I'm gonna keep it. Yeah, there. I'm a, I had to ch I changed it back because because of that. Uh, because like I said, I'm gonna start doing reviews for a married at first sight, kind of just random thoughts that I have. Uh, you I know, get on there for one of them episodes. This, this I'm on this new, I'm on this new season. I, I'm on this new season. Oh, uh, it's, it's that black girl, the light skinned little black girl, she gonna be trouble for that white boy. He don't want no parts of this. Why he her know, name Dominique? I know. And that's a biracial girl that you gotta know how to you gotta you gotta know how to keep them in. The control. problem is, is that she is young. She's young. That's what I'm saying. She's, she's very, young. She's and that very dude was like 35 young. or 36 or something. She's like 20. He like no, he's like 32. I think he's like early 30s, like 32. But my so where he might win her over a butter, like what's crazy is that you you get to know him because he is. Like it's the fuck the situation where he was dating a chick and then she hit him up and was like, "I'm getting hey, married to somebody else." She get married to somebody else, so you like, damn, like, and he's like, "What am I doing?" You know, like really wrong, and I, I really want to be, you know, like my parents have been together so long. She comes from a single parent background. I feel like her mom probably feels like, oh, if she gets married, she'll calm down. But her friends seem to be like partiers because like, they're like, we still going to be able to go out, right? So that's going to be a problem. It's going it, to, I'm foreseeing, I know you didn't watch the last season, no, but it was a chick on, on there last season, black chick, that was one of the problems that they had. So I don't know. Last I'm season very... I watched was with the dude that was still, like they told that, that dark skin, beautiful dark skin sister that, that, that she was ugly or whatever. She was from uh, Michigan. Uh, it was when they was in Atlanta with the one dude that was like the that dude Chris, the, the dude Chris who was just a that fuck boy. That's, uh, yep, I was. Yo, I, had, I had to let them go. Was somebody was that came that a season after that was worse than him. Hold on, there's somebody worse than him. I wanted to punch that dude, and I don't really get into it. I wanted to punch that dude, but I wanted to punch both of them. Because she oh, was the, the, so is, so so the chick, the, that chick, Paige, when it came to decision day, she still was like, you know, I just, I don't know what to do. I'm just on a fence. And then Dr. Viviana had to say, hold on, we're not doing this because this entire season, he has been with you, watching with you, he has said things to you, he's done this. She said, you're not doing we're not doing this they was trying not to make a decision <clears throat> but there's a couple it's the it's the dude with the bald head this season with the other chick that's kind of like she not like she probably like falling between our complexion mm -hmm. dog it's gonna it's a problem i need to go back and watch part of some of the some of the last season then. no you know you this okay just don't even don't even pay attention to last season it's this season. I'm telling you, I'm interested to see what happens because from what I'm seeing and what I'm picking up on with this couple, because they was they they were the couple at the end of the, the the last week's episode that was getting married, and so it continues this week. I'm telling you, 
pay attention to the shit and let me see if you pick up on what I pick up on. So the, the, the black the black black couple, right? Black couple with the it's two black couples. Right, right. The one one with the, the ball head the, brother. The ball head brother with the beard. I want to see if you pick up on like. Oh, then he's gonna the, be he's too sensitive for her. I don't think I don't think it's that. I think she, I think because of her personality, she's like she be saying that she's a perfectionist. She's already mentioned that she never really has dated a black dude that was like that. She she never really she had a hard time dating black dudes because she can never really find one that's attractive. Red flag. So you I don't. That girl said that. What part? Of, she man, said, maybe I came in. She said that. She said that. That leads me to believe. I don't know if she really be dealing with niggas like that. Or maybe if she's dealing with niggas, they might be ambiguous niggas. And then she also shout changed. out to Adrian. <laughs> but she also said that she wanted her guy to have hair. This was also a problem two seasons before this with another couple. That's what she told them, and they paired her with something opposite of what she said. I get it. This is based off of science. This person, personality wise, matches what y'all saying. If if this, but that true, visual, it ain't what true. that is. I'm telling you, girl, boy, they be they playing, and and let's circle back. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm into it this year because I was like, it was something about the, it. Just, it's something don't feel right about her. Like I, like I, like feel like she's gonna think she's better than him. I, that's what I thought. I. I feel like that. I'm about to come over there, baby. I'm coming. <laughs> I got to go be a mom. Yeah, no, okay. no, no, no. Everybody stay locked in as always. And we'll be back soon. <laughs>